Well, hello, my dear people of Our Lady of the Woods. Today is June 14th, 2021. It's that time where I begin the week with you as we continue to move forward and continue to transition. And however we're coping with the COVID-19, the pandemic, and we keep moving, I hope, in the right direction. So welcome, even to all people of goodwill. Today is Flag Day. So I would like to offer a slight reflection through the compliments of Colonel Daniel K. Chaduski, United States Air Force, retired. I am your flag. I was born on June 14th, 1777. I am more than just cloth shaped into a design. I am the refuge of the world's oppressed people. I am the silent sentinel of freedom. I am the emblem of the greatest nation on earth. I am the inspiration for which American patriots gave their lives and fortunes. I have led your sons and daughters into battle from Valley Forge to the bloody swamps of Vietnam. I walk in silence with each of your honored dead to their final resting place beneath the silent white crosses row upon row. I have flown through peace and war, strife and prosperity, and amidst it all, I have been respected. My red stripes symbolize the blood spilled in defense of this glorious nation. My white stripes signify the burning tears shed by Americans who lost their sons and daughters. My blue field is indicative of God's heaven under which I fly. My stars cluster together, unify 50 states as one for God and country. Old Glory is my nickname, and proudly I wave on high. Honor me, respect me, defend me with your lives and your fortunes. Never let my enemies tear me down from my lofty position, lest I never return. Keep alight the fires of patriotism. Strive earnestly for the spirit of democracy. Worship eternal God and keep his commandments, and I shall remain the bulwark of peace and freedom for all. I am your flag. I think it's a beautiful poem to help us set the tone for what we should be celebrating on Flag Day. It calls us to enter into the values of God's kingdom, reminding ourselves that the symbolism of a flag calls us also to be courageous amongst God's people and for the most vulnerable, oppressed, and forgotten of God's people also. I end with a quote by um, Rabbi Mark Gelman. And he had written an article called God Squad, American Flag as a Way to Faith. And he said the following, Rabbi Gelman, The reason that God must be over all nations is that without God, the only foundation for human dignity is our citizenship in a nation. This leads inevitably to national arrogance and national conflicts. However, with God, all people on earth, every nation and from no nations, are made in the image of God and are therefore equally holy and have equal dignity and equal human rights. God keeps us from making an idol out of any flag. However, the flag, properly reverenced and properly understood, keeps us humble and grateful, and these virtues bring us to God, who is the ultimate being beyond us, to whom we owe the greatest debt. And I close with three questions he raises. Do you owe any debt to something bigger than yourself? Do you feel that you owe something to those who died for your freedom? Is your citizenship merely a matter of establishing your claims on the state? Or does the state have the right to make moral claims upon you? And so let us turn to the Lord this week. Let us remember our nation. Let us remember what our flag stands for. And let us as a people and a community continue as we wave that flag to build the values of God's kingdom in this nation, in our community, our family, and in the world. Amen. So this week, um, I'm trying to slowly allow the parish to come to July and August where we all kind of take some breathing time. We just kind of try to chill. Um, you know, we have our masses and the, uh, the different sacraments, but at the same time we need, and I firmly believe this as I said last week, to rejuvenate, to revitalize ourselves, 
our hearts and our souls. So there are a few things happening this week, beginning on Wednesday, June 16th from 6 to 7.30 is a Bible study with the Gospel of John on Zoom, led by the DRE of the parish, Ms. Claudette Wagner. If you're still interested, you can check the bulletin and Claudette's email is there. Um, I'm not sure if she has any more spaces or openings right now, but you know, you could check. This week, Friday, June 18th, there is a memorial mass for Donna Kampal. Um, it's um, been a little while, but she died December 5th in 2020. And uh, the family is able now to uh, bring their grief and of course, um, all that it includes in a moment of remembering someone who's died. So this Friday at 10.30 a.m., we'll remember Donna and her family. I'd like to remind you that the parish each year has a yearly subscription to formed.org. I want to put that in your consciousness and your radar. We su subscribe to it because I really do believe a lot of the stuff, and I would say probably all the stuff, but certainly the stuff I've used, our faith formation program has used, adult faith formation um, has also been a benefit, a beneficiary of this. But this form.org, it pulls together the best in Catholic movies, children's programming, audio dramas and books. We provide a trusted and engaging entertainment alternative in support of a Catholic lifestyle, says Forum.org. Our Bible studies, sacramental prep materials, documentaries, books, audio talks from leading Catholic experts will help you grow in understanding your faith. If you have any questions on how to get on there and use our subscription, uh, please contact the office or especially send an email to Jason Buckley or to Claudette in the Faith Formation, or I'm, I'm sure, you know, Becky would help you or, you know, route you to where you need to go for that. But I really would encourage you to take um, advantage of form.org. I think it's a, it's a wonderful resource to have for our faith, for our family, our children, our youth. There are different people and some groups that are still doing some planting and landscaping around the parish. Don't forget if you're interested in doing something or you want to come and plant a tree or a flower, please get a hold of Benny Trail. She's a member of the parish pastoral council and she is the one coordinating that here. It's just we need someone that knows what all is going on. We don't want to walk in and say, oh my, that plant just showed up or this tree showed up. And we, we, we don't want to have a willy-nilly approach to um, all kinds of things popping up here or there. So Benny is the one who's on pastoral council, and if you could just contact her again, um, call the parish office if you need to, if you need her to be pointed out to you at the masses on the weekend. Uh, but just contact her, first of all, if you're still interested in helping in any way, or in case you have something you wanted to plant. Just we need, we need someone that is the liaison. Um, finally, we want to keep all the present protocols in place uh, with what we've been doing in church, where certain areas in church are designated for mandatory uh, mask and social distancing. And then there's those other areas, uh, especially the two main sections in front of the altar that are optional mask and social distancing. We just have to continue to be respectful and care for others. Um, some who may not feel fully comfortable yet. And also, as I keep responding and repeating, but I'll keep on it. Uh, when I was a teacher, a student teacher in training, we were told in one education class, you have to say something five times before it's internalized. So I really do like that phrase that Archbishop Vigneron has used. We really need heroic patience. So if you're not able to get into that section where um, it's an optional mask um, and optional social distancing. Please then out of respect, if you have to go into one of the other sections, please you know, put on a mask. We have the mask out in the gathering space. I think that um, with the protocol, I just wanted to remind you that actually everything else, depending if it keeps going the way it is right now, um, we will look at a lot of things kind of coming back then in September. Certainly, if, if things keep on the, you know, kind of the situation where we see less and less of COVID, uh, the policies are changing and you know, the AOD and the state, 
um, for our parish, then the plan will be to start bringing back other things in September. Uh, the possibility of the parish office being open, um, hopefully faith formation will be in person, but we're still monitoring that. You don't want to all of a sudden jump on a bandwagon and then all of a sudden something else happens. So we're going to try to introduce other things beyond what we are just doing now, beginning in September, probably after Labor Day. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So then I close with two little moments of humor. As today is Flag Day, I always grew up, and my mother used to like to cut out some of these uh, cartoons and send them to me wherever I was at. I was in Japan, I was in the Caribbean. Oftentimes my mom would cut out something from Family Circus. And so since today is Flag Day, I love how the little guy, the little boy is there. And his response is, this is my favorite shirt because it has our country's logo on it. I think that's kind of cute. And so a beautiful reminder about Flag Day. And then a little more religious one based on the gospel of this last Sunday, where we heard in the gospel about the parable of the mustard seed. And so here again, we have Jesus. Jesus starts out, the kingdom of God is like a tiny mustard seed that grows into a huge tree with big branches that lots of birds can take shelter in. And then you hear this voice under a hood go, well, I think we all know exactly what Jesus is saying in this parable. And then the hood comes off and it's a bird that says, only birds go to heaven. The truth has been made plain. And then the bird starts squonking, open your eyes. And why else are angels depicted with wings? Why does the Holy Spirit appear as a dove? The signs are everywhere. You just have to look. And Jesus looks to the bird and looks to the crowd and says, that interpretation is for the birds. So I hope you have a beautiful week. What needs to be for the birds and what needs to be for us? May your faith grow like a mustard seed into a profound encounter with God as we get close to the official opening of summer. Have a great week. God bless.